I'm going to do a, a little experiment now on reading people's body language. Uh, very often people uh, give away certain secrets by the way that they, they move, the way that they, they speak, the way that they act. And so I've asked uh, two members of the audience to, to come up. And your name is? Uh, I'm Laura. Hello, Laura. Nice Very pleased to meet you. to meet you. And you are? I'm Howard. Very pleased to meet you as well. So what I have here um, is uh, an, or an ordinary pack of cards. Uh, do either of you shuffle cards? Can you shuffle cards? Yeah. Well, one of, one of the useful, useful things uh, that you learn uh, doing a lot of these sorts of tricks is that if people can't shuffle cards, they can still squeeze them together. So there's two piles. Can you, Laura, could you just squish them into a big squidgy pile? It's just, we need to be absolutely certain the pile is, is, uh, is well mixed. And uh, Howard, just in case you think uh, I'm in cahoots with Laura, can you just cut the pack so that we know that's all fair and square, right. So what we have here is a well shuffled deck. That's the technical term for it. What we're going to do is I'm going to produce um, two piles of cards, two random piles of cards. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about those. And when I ask you those questions, you can either tell me the truth or you can lie. Now, in psychology labs, there is a special protocol for producing these sorts of uh, random piles of cards where we let the cards actually decide which cards will be used rather than a human being who might have a bias to putting red in one side and black in another. So what I'm going to do, and to just keep an eye on me to check I'm doing it properly, is if I deal a black card, I'll deal another one face down under it. Black card, black card, black card red card, black card, and so I'm going to go through the piles like this, red card, black card, red card, red card, black card, black card, red card, red card, black card, black card, red card, black card, red card, black card, black card, oops, black card, black card, seem to do a lot of black cards here, red card, red card, okay? So you've got that pile, if you have a look at them, it's probably much smaller than yours, Howard, because there seem to be quite a lot of black cards. I have absolutely no idea. Don't let me see those cards. I have no idea how many cards are in the pile, uh, what that mixture of red or black cards are in your hand. Nobody could know that because we completely fairly shuffled the deck. I'm now going to ask you some questions, and as I say, you can either tell me the truth or you can lie. So the first question to you, uh, Laura, is do you have more red cards or more black cards in your hand? I have more red. More red cards, okay. Same question to you, Howard, more red or more black? More black. More black cards, okay. Laura, could you swap any two of your cards uh, for two of Howard's? So just take those two cards out, put them down. Howard, if you take your two, any two cards, whatever you fancy, put them down. Okay, and then pick up those cards. I have a look. I'm going to ask you the same question again. Now, Laura, do you have more red cards or more black cards in your hand? I have more red. More red, that's interesting. Howard, same question. More black. Can you swap a single card? I think I've got I've got what's going on here. Okay. Right. And as we'll see at the end. A single card can make the difference between this working or not working. Laura, more red or more black cards? More black. Interesting. Howard? More red. Okay. I think I know what's, what's going on here. I also think I've got a reasonably good measure of the pair of you. I'm going to ask you a question. Again, remember, one card will make the difference between this working or not. Laura, are you happy with your cards or do you want to swap any of them with Howard? Um, I'll go for a swap. How many? Um, two. Two cards. Okay. You chose to do that. Two cards. Howard, can you swap? Okay. Right. And remember, you had a f what seems to be a free choice on that, though I did suspect that's exactly what you would do. Howard, are you happy with the cards, or do you want to make a swap? I'll swap two. You want to swap two? Yeah. Okay, I knew there was a synergy, a yin-yang balance going on here. Okay. Right, now let's see if I was right and able to predict exactly what you were doing. From these shuffle pa packs, you've got some cards there. I believe that in all that swapping round and, and answering those questions, that you, Laura, have as many red cards in your hand as you, Howard, have black cards in your hand. And remember, one card here can make the difference. So, Laura, could you count out loudly down onto the table there the red cards in your hand? Sure. One. Um, Two, two, three, three four. four. And the rest are black, can you just leave them down there? So four, Howard, dramatically, can you count the number of black cards in your hand down? You should have four. One. 
two, two three, three four. four. And all the rest of them all the rest are, red. are red cards. So one card could have made the difference if you hadn't done that swapping and swapping back at the end. It wouldn't have worked. Thank you very much. The trick where I seem to be able to read people's body language and know exactly how many red cards were in one hand and exactly how many black cards were in the other is one of my favorite tricks. The reason is the trick works because of algebra. Yes, I can hear the moans and groans already. Algebra is our friend. Uh, it allows this great trick to work and I use algebra all the time in my work to, to try and model the way the human brain operates. So what do I mean by algebra? Well, algebra is simply using letters in place of numbers that we don't know. So let's have a look at what happened in the trick close up. We had a pile of face up red cards, we had a pile of face up black cards, and underneath a pile of face down cards that were a mixture of red and black on both sides. Now I genuinely had absolutely no idea what these cards were. They were a mixture of reds and blacks, and over here they were a mixture of reds and blacks as well. But there were some things I did know. And this is where algebra comes into it. I had no idea how many face-up red cards there were on this pile. So instead of having the number, which might have been seven or eight or whatever, let's call that R0. So R0 is just the number of cards that were in this pile. Over here, again, face-up black cards. I had no idea how many face-up face black cards there were going to be. So let's call that B0, basically just the number that that particular shuffle deck produced in that pile. Down here, I had the face down cards and they're a mixture of reds and blacks. So again, I have no idea which numbers of reds and which numbers of blacks they are. But in this pile, I'm going to say that I've got B1 black cards and R1 red cards. And similarly over here, we're going to have a mixture of red and black cards and I'm going to call those R2 and B2. B2 are the number of black cards in this pile and the number of red cards in this pile. So all I've really done there is to take the trick and describe it with letters rather than the actual numbers that were done when the dealing happened. But what do I begin to know about this? Well, I know it was a full pack of cards, okay? And that means that all the red cards add together to give us 26. There are 26 red cards and 26 black cards. So I can start to write some things down. I can write that R0, the number of red cards there, plus R1, plus R2, is equal to the number of black cards. So that's B0 plus B1, the black cards there, plus B2, the black cards there. So all I'm really doing is describing the fact that all of the red cards add together to 26, all of the black cards add together to 26, and that, that is how I represent the numbers. There's one other thing that I know. For every red card that I dealt face up in this pack, I dealt another card face down in the face down pack underneath it. Similarly, every black card here, there was a card that was dealt face down in this pile. So what that means is that the number of cards that were in this pile, R0, must be equal to the number of cards that were in this pile face down, which is equal to B1 plus R1. So I know that R0 is equal to B1 plus R1. Similarly over here, I know the same number of cards in this pile as there are in this pile. So that B0 is equal to B2 plus R2. So in this pile here, R0 is equal to B1 plus R1. And in this pile over here, B0 is equal to B2 plus R2. OK, so I'm now going to do a very simple piece of algebra, something called a substitution, which means that instead of writing R0 in this equation, I'm going to write what it's equal to, which in this case is B1 plus R1, okay? So what that looks like is that what used to be R0 here, which is B1 plus R1 plus R1 plus R2 is equal to, again, I can write this instead of B0, B2 plus R2 plus B1 plus B2. OK, so all I've done is basically to write instead of R0 uh, in this equation what that is equal to. And then I can go through and I can cancel on both sides of an equation. So I've got a B1 uh, and R, 
an R1 and an R1 and an R2. So what that gives me is R2 and R, R1 and R1 gives me two R1 there, plus B1 plus R2 is equal to, and on this side, I've got a B1, I've got a B2, I've got another B2, so that's two B2 plus R2 plus B1. Okay, and then I can do cancelling on both sides. I've got B1 here and I've got B1 there. I can subtract that from both sides and I don't change the equation. Over here, I've got an R2 and an R2. I can again get rid of that from both sides and I can divide both sides by two. And what that means is at the end of all of that, I have that R1 is equal to B2. Okay, so that simple piece of algebra has given us this, R1 is equal to B2. But what does that actually mean? Let's go back to look at the table. What that means is that R1, the number of red cards in this pile, is always, always, always going to be equal to B2, the number of black cards in this pile. So that's how the trick works. That's the prediction that I make. You'll have the same number of red cards in your hand as you have black cards in your hand. And because every single time, so long as you're using a full deck, each and every single time you do that, even if you swap the cards over, so long as you swap the same number of cards between different piles, the algebra says it has to work. And that's what make this, makes this trick so much fun to do, because you can have all that swapping backwards and forwards. It makes no difference whatsoever, so long as they swap exactly the same number of cards and keep this equation and this equation correct. So it's a foolproof trick, so long as you do the dealing properly, you can have great fun with it. The algebra means it will always work, and algebra is used not just for this trick, but also in lots of other situations where it's important that you have information that is always going to happen in the way that you want it to. For example, if you're building software to lower the, uh, the, the undercarriage on an aeroplane, you want to use algebra to check it's going to work every single time. And so algebra isn't an enemy, algebra is our friend, and this is a lovely way of being able to play with that. Mathematicalmagic.com is the place to go for more resources, teaching materials, and more information. I hope you enjoy. It.